Well, that $26 billion purchase of Burlington Northern Santa Fe raises a few questions, including is the railroad industry undergoing a once-in-a-lifetime comeback that other investors can take for a ride? To help answer the question, we are joined right now by Wick Mormon. He is the president and CEO of Norfolk Southern, the nation's fourth largest railroad. Wick, always glad to talk to you. Do you feel like Warren Buffett gave investors a seal of approval to come back and invest in railroads? Well, I, uh, Deidre, it's always good to talk to you, too, and I think, obviously, that uh, Mr. Buffett's pur purchase of uh, BNSF is a big vote of confidence for the railroad industry, but, of course, he started to invest in the rail industry a couple of years ago uh, and said at the time that he thought he was a little bit late coming to the investment hypothesis. So I think it's the culmination of... Uh, what's been going on in our industry for a number of years. I, I was going to say, I mean, some could argue that the renaissance started back in 2004. That's when pricing really started to improve. What do you see as the driver for that strong pricing? Do you see it continuing? Well, I certainly see the pricing uh, continuing, possibly not at the levels we've seen for the past few years, but at levels that are above the historical rate of less than inflation that we saw for 20 years after 1980. And I think it's really a question of two things. One is capacity. Uh, in 2003, we really start, started to see transportation capacity in general in this country tighten up, both in the rail industry, where we had right-sized the industry, and on the highways. And then the other is, I think, the increasing recognition by a lot of shippers as to the advantages of rail transportation uh, in terms of improved service reliability and our environmental and sustainability profile. So would you say, though, that pricing is all about discipline now for you? I mean, you can flex some pretty uh, powerful newfound muscles, can you not? Well, uh, we do have the ability to price into the marketplace, but again, it is, at the end of the day, market-driven pricing, and I think it reflects, at least in our company, uh, the value of the service we're providing, the, which is the result of a disciplined operation and a lot of investment in service improvement. Would you have been pleased if Buffett had bought Norfolk Southern, or are you disappointed, I should say, that he's selling his stake in your company? Well, I, I always took it as a small point of pride that he did own some Norfolk Southern shares, and I can understand why he would sell them now that he's made the investment in BNSF. Uh, in terms of him, uh, his purchase of our company, I would just say that I think every CEO of a public company at one time or another has a fleeting thought about wouldn't life be easier uh, if they weren't in the public right, environment. Right, no quarterly but earnings estimates, sort of no exactly. management of PR. Uh, that, that, so you have that kind of grass is greener thought, but uh, I think just the fact that he's invested in the railroad industry is obviously such a vote of confidence in the long-term ability not only of BNSF, but Norfolk Southern and all the companies to do well for the future, that that's the real positive story. We sort of want to make the point as well that geographically Norfolk Southern and Burlington Northern don't really compete, sort of they're, they're not direct competitors, but as far as what Buffett's interest in the sector does for D.C. when regulation is being considered. Do you see regulators potentially holding back a little bit and sort of leaving the railroads to your management and other CEOs' management because Warren Buffett has such a good reputation? Well, I, I think that remains to be seen. I certainly understand that Mr. Buffett is uh, uh, viewed as a, a very positive force uh, in Washington in terms of being good for business and good for America. Uh, but I think my additional hope is, and this is what we've seen to date, is that the regulators and Congress in general understand the importance of our industry and understand that it's important for us to be able to continue to make an adequate return and invest because in many ways we're a large part of the solution to what I think is a looming transportation crisis in this country. Wick, we thank you so much for joining us.